Namaste and welcome to Dr. Shah's clinic. In this video, we are going to discuss about premarital fertility testing. Everything under the sun about premarital fertility testing and screening. So, what is basically a premarital fertility test or screen? Now, a premarital fertility test or screening is basically you know a set of blood tests combined with an elaborate clinical history session with you know an andrologist that you would normally undergo before your marriage so say if you're planning for marriage within the next six months to one year or if you're contemplating on getting married and settling down taking a premarital fertility test or a screening procedure is usually quite good for your health and the reason i tell this is because today male factor infertility affects almost seven percent of the global male population the Askill studies have actually suggested that today almost 40% of infertility or even up to 50% of the time fertility problems in a couple that occur are primarily 50% of the time is primarily, are primarily attributed to the male partner rather than the female partner. So however what's very important to you know kind of understand here is that should every individual before marriage undergo a premarital fertility test the answer is a big no. no. Not every individual you know should undergo a premarital fertility test before, uh, before his marriage. And um, the, and uh, here's the thing because if there are and there are very specific indications, right? So for example, if you notice your erectile function is not good, then it's why and you're not married, or if you are in a relationship, then yes, maybe you have to think about a premarital fertility assessment before settling down on the relationship or before contemplating marriage. Two, if you have you know pain during erection, severe pain during erection, then yes, you may have to contem contemplate on premarital fertility. Premarital fertility test number three. If you notice your semen volume is very low, then definitely, definitely you need to have a proper premarital fertility assessment. Uh, point number four: You notice blood in the semen, or you uh, you know notice you know a lack of interest or lack of mood, a decreased sexual thought pattern. You know overall your overall thoughts related to sex and sexual intercourse is very low. You should definitely you know kind of look at doing a premarital fertility assessment. Say if you're you know basically adequate to masturbatory behavior and you find no specific interest in sexual intercourse. A premarital fertility testing combined with psychosexual counseling can actually help you overcome from the masturbatory behavior or the porn addiction that usually goes hand in hand with such behaviors. So apart from that, the other indications for a premarital fertility test is if you notice, you know, your beard growth as well as, your, you know, the hair growth here and the moustache growth here, the beard growth and moustache was very less. You notice sparse hair distribution in the chest, sparse hair distribution in the urogenital region, then yes, a premarital fertility test is definitely recommended. Now, the reason I'm, you know, kind of telling all these specific indications, you know, for premarital fertility tests, is these are all clinical signs that technically point to a hidden male factor fertility issue or a problem with the sexual health. So with testing what basically happens is we look at the male sex hormones and that's the first thing we do. We look at the male sex hormones and the male sex hormones are basically nothing but FSH, LH, total testosterone, free testosterone, sex hormone binding globulin, estrogen combined with prolactin. So if there's a hormonal imbalance or if there's a deficit in the hormones in the male sex hormones, you can have all these symptoms. And apart from that, should a semen analysis be done, you know, during a premarital fertility testing? No, the answer is no. Say if your hormones are normal, we don't recommend a semen analysis usually because same changes in, you know, semen parameters are very, very non-specific. So, you know, an individual may have a, may have a count of 13 million per ml, but may father a child even with 13 million per ml and he may have a 50% motility. But there may be another individual who has 25 million per ml with a 30% motility or 40% motility. He may not father a child. So unless or until the individual has tried for a year, you know, post marriage for a child uh, and if a pregnancy has not happened, only then we do a semen analysis. During a routine premarital fertility assessment, we basically look at the hormones because the hormones itself are, an, you know, basically a direct marker of testicular function. So with the hormones, we understand and interpret testicular function. To a reasonable extent, they are quite accurate. And semen analysis is only rec recommended in exceptional cases. So say the individual has very, very low semen volume. Uh, and he notices he notices blood in the semen or any other you know some hyper seminal hyper viscosity delayed liquefaction in the semen any if there are you know specific signs that the individual notices only then we recommend a semen analysis otherwise routine semen analysis during a premarital fertility check is definitely not required. Uh, the other important uh, point to discuss is what else is done during a premarital fertility check. So we also take a in depth andrology history andrological history. So do we do a male fertility workup? We ask about fifty questions to the individual about his lifestyle, about his uh, overall medical history, surgical history, you know, past uh, drug use history, everything. We take we have an elaborate questionnaire where we clinically evaluate the patient. In addition to this, during a premarital fertility check, we also estimate and measure testis size, 
we clinically examine the vas we see we 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 palpate and see if the vas is you know actually palpable so if you look at the image on the right we you know basically um, that's the vas right so the image on the right shows the vas the testis abdomen so clinically we basically examine these structures and see if everything is okay and testicular size is also some to some extent correlates with the sperm production so with the set of male sex with so with the male sex hormone evaluation that is the fsh lh total t free t e to prolactin and uh, the testicular size and overall androgenization hair distribution and among other things and we also measure we also measure the penis size the penis girth length and among certain other things we take so we kind of you know kind of bring this into a total um, so we take all these things in combination and then we give give a report to the patient so this is what typically happens during a premarital fertility check it's not indicated for all men please please bear this in mind but there are very specific indications like so as we have previously discussed if there's low if erection is inadequate hair growth is poor semen volume is very low there's blood in the semen or the other seminal abnormalities you are able to visibly see uh, in only, it's only in these cases where we recommend a premarital fertility check otherwise if you think mo most of the time you know, you're a healthy healthy individual you're working out well you're walking you're eating healthy your weight is optimized and you notice normal semen volume good erection good sexual thought good hair distribution most of the time a premarital fertility check is definitely not required so this is part 1 of the premarital fertility check and in part 2 in the next video we are going to discuss on what are the tests you should not do during a premarital fertility exams all right i hope you enjoyed this video please like comment and subscribe this is dr shah